The PlayStation 5 launched exactly one year ago today. There is a lot of hype and expectations for 2022 and beyond, but how has the PlayStation 5 performed after just one year? Last year, before Sony revealed what the actual console looked like, they showed us the DualSense controller. A lot of people were questioning whether or not this new controller would actually be as innovative as it was marketed. In my opinion, it's safe to say the DualSense is the best gaming controller that has ever existed. Straight out of the box, it is extremely comfortable and fit my hands perfectly. Everything Sony said about how innovative the DualSense was, was exactly spot on. The biggest feature on the DualSense, in my opinion, are the adaptive triggers. The adaptive triggers alone have really changed the way gaming feels. Whether you're shooting a gun in Call of Duty, or drawing a bowstring in Ghost of Tsushima, you actually feel like you're inside the game itself. There is one and only one negative about the DualSense, and that is the battery life. In my experience, the battery life lasts about 4-5 to five hours after being fully charged. However, this issue is almost forgettable if you have the charging station. The DualSense charging station eliminates any unnecessary charging cords and charges the controllers extremely fast. Now, I only recommend picking up the charging station if you have at least two controllers so you never have to stop gaming. Sony also made a media remote that is very convenient. Instead of having to scroll through the menus looking for services like YouTube, Spotify, Disney Plus, or Netflix, you can simply press a button and you're there. As far as the HD camera and the 3D Pulse headset, I can't really give my thoughts on them because I don't own them. However, I have heard really positive things about the 3D Pulse headset. Going into the launch of the PlayStation 5, one of the things everyone was curious about was how the UI was going to look. If we're comparing the PlayStation 5 UI to the PlayStation 4 UI, I genuinely prefer the overall aesthetic of the PlayStation 5's more. Everything looks a lot cleaner and smoother including the PlayStation Store itself. If I had to pick one negative, it would have to be that there are no themes on the PlayStation 5, unfortunately. The SSD that is inside the PlayStation 5 is absolutely insane. Almost every single game that you can play, from the home screen to the main menu inside the game, loads in just seconds. Out of everything impressive about the console, the SSD is truly the future of video games. Just look at how Insomniac Games has already utilized the SSD with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Despite how amazingly fast and impressive the SSD is, we have to address the elephant in the room. The initial storage size when you get a PlayStation 5 is extremely disappointing. There's only 667 gigabytes of internal storage. Only until recently, players have finally been able to upgrade the storage by buying and installing an internal SSD. When it comes to a launch lineup, I believe the PlayStation 5 had the best launch lineup ever. Demon's Souls is one of, if not, the best remakes in gaming history. Spider-Man Miles Morales, despite being a smaller game, absolutely blew me away with both gameplay mechanics and having stunning graphics. I didn't pick up Sackboy Big Adventure or Godfall. I've heard pretty good things about Sackboy and nothing but terrible things about Godfall. In the first year of the PlayStation 5 life cycle, there have been four AAA exclusives, Demon's Souls, Returnal, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Deathloop. I will say, coming from someone who didn't really enjoy Returnal or Deathloop, it has felt pretty dry as far as getting AAA exclusives. For me, only getting two exclusives that I enjoyed in one year is not that good. But overall, four in one year during a pandemic, where a lot of games have been pushed back into 2022, is pretty impressive. PlayStation Plus with the PS5 is pretty much like having PlayStation Plus on the PS4. It's pretty much the same. I think the biggest benefit for PlayStation Plus members, specifically on the PS5, is that you get a chance to play a big chunk of the best PlayStation 4 exclusives for free. I think this was very smart for Sony to do as a way to let people that were coming from Xbox One experience some of the greatest games ever made. The whole point of this video was to try and dissect the PlayStation 5 and without bias, determine whether or not it was necessary to buy the PS5 at launch. Has the PlayStation 5 lived up to the expectations after one year? I would say yes. I believe the only reason why this is a valid question is because Horizon Forbidden West got delayed into 2022. If Gorilla was able to hit the initial late 2021 release window, it wouldn't even be a question. Could you imagine if Demon's Souls, Returnal, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Horizon Forbidden West all launching just in the first year of the PS5 lifecycle? How could you not say it's lived up to the expectations? Now that we've gone over a lot of positives and some negatives with the PlayStation 5 after year one, it's time that I give my official rating. 
I truly believe the PlayStation 5 deserves an A. If Horizon Forbidden West launched this year, it would easily get an A+. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new. It really does help the channel grow. Until next time, guys, take care.